If you guys need literally anything on MLB, flawless XP for the new program, stubs for any new players, anything, monthly awards, anything on MLB, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or email me at redmambabiz at gmail.com. We have a full team ready to grind. Hit me up if you have any questions. All right, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys the best possible tips and tricks on how to hit better, how to hit more home runs, all that type of stuff. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more MLB content, tips, tricks, all of that. So first things first, you guys want to go ahead and be in the main menu. Go ahead and go over to your settings. The reason why you guys want to do this in the main menu is so you don't have to keep redoing it before every game if you play online. Um, if you guys do change your settings in the middle of an online game, it will not save for another game, which is very annoying. So make sure to do it in the main menu if you guys are having that issue. And uh, this is one of the main things to uh, making to helping you become a better hitter um first things first you guys want to go ahead and go to zone hitting interface um if you guys are new at the game this is your first year or maybe second year you're not very good at the game in general use directional directional is the easiest all you have to do is uh press x or a whatever uh console you're on um so yeah, use directional if you're brand new, but if you're trying to be good, skilled, a top tier player, or just a competitive player in general, use zone. Now, a lot of people use a lot of different things. This is personally what I use. I use nothing in the center, basic PCI inner, and nothing on the outer. Everything else is kind of, it's up to you. Vibration, turn it off, will definitely help as well. So um, if you're in an intense situation, your control is not going crazy, vibrating and throwing you off. That's what that helps you, you can leave it on, whatever. Why I leave PCI center off is I'll show kind of more in clips here in a second. But if you have diamonds or circles or, or whatever in the middle of the PCI, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to track the ball. Um, those little circles, the diamonds, the baseball bat, whatever you guys choose is going to cover the ball. So it's going to be a lot harder to see where the ball is coming. Um, if it's curveball, slider, fastball, whatever. So uh, I use nothing in the center. I use basic on the inner and nothing on the outer because uh, sometimes when you have something on the outer, it kind of messes with me a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and get into actual hitting tips, strategies, and everything I do going into an at bat. So, um, I would say, first of all, the first main thing is what do you do with your PCI? What do you do with that little circle, the little wedge, whatever you use? What do you do with it? Where do you put it? Do you put it at the bottom, left, right, top, middle? I put it on the top. So, where a lot of people mess up is they kind of predict where the ball is going to go. So, they see the pitch and they're oh, that's a, that's a curveball. So, I'm going to put my PCI on the bottom of the screen or left, right, which is okay. If you're really good at the game and you play a lot, you can do that. But for me, what I do is I put my PCI right where the pitcher releases the ball and just follow the ball all the way to the, to the hit. It makes it 100% more easier to hit the ball with good contact, perfect, perfect, or just get square on the ball when you are following the pitcher's release it makes it that much easier to try it it makes it so much easier to see the ball okay now number two most important thing is what is your strategy going in to an at bat i think this is second most important next to pci and how good you are with it and how comfortable you are with it so make sure you guys get good with your pci number two is approach so if you guys look at most if not all of these clips i have one two uh, strikes. I already have two strikes on me, one or two, sometimes none, but uh, typically I'll have strikes on me. There's two reasons for that. Reason number one is I don't think you guys should swing until you get a pitch you love. Right down the middle, um, top, low, whatever your sweet spot is, whatever you feel most confident in getting a good hit on, wait for that pitch. Now, the problem I have and the problem that probably most of you guys have as well is swinging at pitches that aren't bad. You know, that they may be a strike or they may be just outside of the zone. They're still hittable, but uh, not the best pitch. Like right there, that's still a hittable pitch, not the best swing. Right there, that is not a good swing in my opinion, even though I got a perfect perfect. Um, in my opinion, that pitch before this one, you should not be swinging at unless you have two strikes. Um, for me, there, there, there's a lot of reasons you guys want to do that. Number one, like I said, you guys can definitely hit those pitches and you guys can get good hits out of them. But more than likely, you're going to get a little crappy dribbler. You're going to get a little bloop. You're going to get something really bad that you don't want. Um, so in my opinion, it's just better to not 
not swing at anything that is not right in your wheelhouse, right in your sweet spot. So, uh, also, there is a big deal. This is the strategy I go in every single year, but this year specifically is it's very hard to pitch. I'm sure they're going to fix it pretty soon. So, by the time you're watching it, they may have already fixed pitching. But pitching is a little bit glitch. You guys can get a lot of good pitches and it'll still just throw a ball. Um, you guys can throw a fastball right down the middle, get a perfect perfect, and it'll throw it out of the zone for whatever reasons pitching is a little glitched right now even with good pitchers so that's another reason um if a pitcher is struggling to pitch you strikes take the take the take the walk the more pitches you guys see the more likely someone is gonna mess up and throw you a perfect pitch right down the middle a hanging slider hanging curveball fastball right down the middle something that you will just crush like you guys can see in these clips someone's gonna eventually throw a bad pitch the more pitches you take so like i said yeah, you can hit some of these other pitches that the, the pitcher will pitch to you. Obviously, you can hit some pitch that's barely outside the zone or some pitch on the corner, whatever. But if you guys wait long enough, you will get a meatball down the middle or a pitch in your strike zone. Also, another reason you guys want to wait and make the pitcher pitch is a big thing you guys want to go for every single game is making the pitcher tired. That is one of the main things you guys want to look for is making the pitcher tired. It's going to be a lot harder for him to place balls. It will make your batter's PCI bigger and bigger as he gets more and more tired. So all in all, you definitely want to get the pitcher tired. That is like one of your main things you're trying to go for is make that pitcher pitch as many pitches as possible. Also, think about it when you're a pitcher. If someone doesn't swing at two or three pitches in a row, strikes or balls, whatever they are, what are you likely to do? Just throw him a fast right down the middle. You're just tired of him not swinging, so you're just going to throw him a pitch. That is another reason why you guys want to, you know, play it. Play a little smart, play a little patient, and whoever you're playing against is most likely just going to get tired of you not swinging and just throw you some meatballs so you do start swinging. Another good tip I can give you guys is always be sitting fastball. So what that means is I like having my PCI in the upper of the zone, uh, wherever the pitcher releases the ball. That's usually where I'll put it. And I'm always sitting waiting for a fastball. The reason being is it's a lot easier to adjust to an off-speed pitch or a curveball or something down in the zone than it is adjusting to a 100 mile an hour fastball up in the zone. Like if you're waiting for a curveball down the zone and someone throws a 100 mile an hour fastball up in the zone, you're fucked. Like you're never gonna hit that. You're gonna be late every time. So always sit fastball and adjust to whatever pitch he throws. Um, the more you play, the more you'll be able to read pitches, and the more you play against a certain pitcher, the more you'll be able to read his pitches, which is another good reason why you guys want to take pitches, so you guys can read the pitcher better over time. And uh, yeah, I've, once you guys get all those tips, put them together, practice a lot, you guys will be a very competitive hitter. Just make sure you guys have patience. That is the main thing I, I think is patience. And also, another like kind of small tip is try to swing early. Uh, it's a lot easier to hit a home run on an early bad hit than it is on a late bad hit. You're not going to really hit home runs if you swing late and, and and not have good contact. But there's a lot of chances that you will still hit and crush a home run even though you didn't get the best contact or uh, placement with your PCI on the ball. But yeah, that is the ending to the video, man. Let me know in the comments how this helps you guys out. Let me know if you guys are hitting more home runs. As always, pitch it to you guys. Comment home run Mamba so I know who made it to the very end. I know who my loyals are. As always, I pitch it to you guys. Don't forget to drop a like on the channel. Helps me out a lot. And subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We are dropping a lot of MLB content throughout this entire year. A lot of methods on how to get coins. A lot of tips and tutorials. All that type of stuff for everything this year. I will see you guys in the next video. Everyone have fun on MLB 23. I'm out. Peace.